Hey guys, it's Judy from Nutrition with Judy. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Judy Cho and I'm board certified in holistic nutrition. And I have a private practice where we focus on root cause healing. And we start with the carnivore cures, all meat elimination diet. Today, we really wanted to share my healing journey from an outside perspective. Kevin was my boyfriend and then my husband when he had to take me to the hospital. So we talk a lot about just what he experienced, what he saw, and then the changes he saw when I went carnivore. I think a lot of you already know how I am post carnivore since I'm here on social media. So we are going to talk and focus more on how I was before and how I kind of was not all together and how I had more bad days than good days. I really just wanted to share this as the end of the year is approaching and really that if I can heal and being that broken and that not well, that mostly everyone can heal. And yes, the diet is the base and the foundation of healing. And if that is not enough to move you to the a plus level of health, then there's maybe some more levers to find, but that doesn't mean that healing cannot happen. I hope that this conversation shows more light and color of how sick I was and how far I've come. And really what I'm trying to help you and convey to you is that healing is possible for anyone because my illness and the depths of how sick I was is kind of demonstrated in this and not everyone even gets that sick but healing is fully possible. Let's get into the talk. Hey, Kev. Hi, Judy. <laughs> okay. Why don't you start with just kind of introducing yourself? Hey guys, my name is Kevin, also known as Judy's dream man. And uh, Judy and I, we've been married now for about 10 years. We've been dating for about 11 years and we have two kids, we have two kids. <laughs> So I know you didn't really want to do this video or audio because you're not the biggest fan of being in the social media space, but thank you for doing it. I think it's so important for people to just get a sense of how people can heal and it's possible for anyone, right? You, yep. Would you believe that with my journey? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So um, if you can share, I mean, everyone knows me as nutrition with Judy, not as when I was sick, when I had my eating disorder, when I was just depressed and staying in bed all day long. So maybe the first question, if you can just answer, you know, how was I before nutrition with Judy, when we were first dating before you even knew about my eating disorder, how was I like? Sure. It was challenging at certain times. Um, you know, you would be hot and cold. Um, there'd be days when you'd be very loving and affectionate, very available and then at other times, you would be very distant and cold and take yourself away from, from me. And I, at the time, you know, I would ask you like, hey, is everything okay? But, you know, you assured me that everything is good. But deep down, I knew that, you know, something was kind of off. Eventually, you did open up about how you suffered from, a, from an eating disorder. And that was a real reason why you're being so distant. And at that time, I was kind of relieved to know that it wasn't me, that that was the reason for you being distant. But at the same time, I knew that, oh, this is going to be something that we're going to have to address eventually. Honestly, it was really terrifying for me to share with you because I wasn't sure if you'd want to stay with me, if you thought I was crazy. And even in the Asian community, it's not very accepted to talk about our struggles and our mental health and even an eating disorder. I mean, most Asian countries just a 50 years ago was struggling with so much. So to talk about eating disorders was just unheard of. And I wasn't sure how you'd take it, but you were supportive and I was very grateful and probably why we got married. But um, if you can share a little bit about how you try to support me, also how you felt as the person seeing someone that's sick and it's not just mental health, but also physical health. Like how is it being the other person, but you can't fix them? Yeah. I didn't honestly think that it was that big of a deal. I mean, eventually it would um, it, it would turn out that it be it, it was a big deal. But you know, when we we're dating, when we got engaged, and I knew you suffered from it, it was something that that I could deal with. And you know, I definitely try to support you in the sense of throw encouraging words, or you know, try to put up challenges, or 
make, you know, have you promised me that, you know, you weren't going to practice those behaviors. But how did you feel? So, you know, there would be days where you would catch me in the bathroom and you would knock and you're like, what are you doing? And I distinctly remember feeling shame and fear of, oh, what if he comes in? Is he going to make me stop? And my selfish need was I need to finish this whole process. And I know you would knock several times and I wouldn't let you in. And then sometimes you'd sigh or grunt, yeah. like you're upset. And yeah. I just, how did you feel in those moments? Was it upset at me or frustrated? You know, I, I never was really upset at you for doing those things, even though you promised me, even though we agreed that, you know, for this given day, we're going to focus on just getting through it without going through those behaviors. I was never really upset. I was just, I felt very disappointed, not so much in you, but just in the situation itself. I knew you needed help. I knew that you were suffering from something and it was just more of, a, I guess, a sense of helplessness of wanting to help you wanting to help someone that you love so much to overcome this and not suffer from something and just feeling helpless. Did you ever feel like you wanted to give up? Like maybe this is going to be forever or, you know, Judy's never going to get better. And she promises me you, you wrote these post-it notes of like today, just focus on today or just focus on this meal and you'll get better. And then you catch me in the bathroom or you, and I'd promise you all these things. And that, that day I couldn't even keep that. Did you ever feel at a certain time? Cause I saw your frustration in your face and then I'd feel wholly bad for that. And then even that would even trigger me to want to do these binge purge cycles even more. But was there ever a time where you're just like, I don't know if I can do this long-term. Yeah. To be honest, there, there wasn't a time when I felt that like I wanted to give up except for this one time. And I'll, I'll go into that in a little bit, but um, when you were going through those behaviors, it definitely took a toll on me where I felt that I wasn't adequate enough to help you overcome your problems. We made a commitment to, you know, work together to, you know, live a better life for, for not only for ourselves, but for our, our family as well. And I just felt, you know, very helpless living with somebody that I cared so much for, but she was suffering from something that I was unable to help her with. And it was definitely a, a struggle. What were ways that you were able to go through seeing me sort of destroy myself? One thing I would do is I would reach out to Judy's brother and talk to him periodically. I mean, he grew up with her, so he had a pretty good understanding of you know how Judy functioned as a person. I would reach out to him to ask for insight as to how he thinks that help her with this issue. Um, we did go to therapy just to kind of talk it out and try to get a better understanding of where she may be coming from and to um, get a sense as to what, what I can do, what we could do to kind of work on this issue. Did you ever once think that me not eating meat was part of the issue? No, not at all. You know, quite the contrary. She used to eat a, uh, a pescatarian diet where it was predominantly vegetables and I thought she was eating the ideal diet. I never thought that it was her diet that could have possibly been the issue of her suffering from what she was suffering from. You said that there was one time where you thought maybe you couldn't help. Um, this was the end of 2014. Our first son, Caleb, he was roughly five or six months old. And this is during the time when you had your breakdown where eating disorder behaviors had gotten pretty bad and got pretty severe. And we were in bed that one night and we're sleeping. And I remember you were watching a YouTube video and you kept playing it back at a really high volume. It drove me nuts where I couldn't sleep. And for a split second, I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't deal with this. This is, this is too crazy. Even after I woke up and I realized that I had that thought, I was like, no, you know what? Judy and I made a commitment, good or bad, we're going to go see through it. The crazy thing is, I don't remember any of that. I don't remember. I do remember watching YouTube videos with him. I don't remember what we we're watching or that I was playing it loud. She was rad watching a random video. I don't even know what it, what it was about. It had nothing to do with eating disorders or anything. But later on, like when I pressed her, like, why are you watching this? She told me like, oh, I need to find out the secret for something. And I was like, she was making no sense. And this is when she, she lost her mind. You guys may have heard that, you know, Judy suffered from a mental breakdown, me living through it. It was pretty intense. Um, some things I can share is that 
that Judy was coherent during her mental breakdown. So she would seem like she's functioning and you would talk to her, ask her questions. She would respond to them in a coherent way. It would always seem a little distant and that eventually got worse and worse and to a point where we just said, oh no, we, we need to take her to the hospital because she's just not there anymore. We took her to the hospital, got her admitted, um, told the doctors, you know, what was going on. And they gave her some medicine. I forget exactly what it was, but soon after she took it, she just snapped out of it. Like she had just woken up from a sleep. She became more aware of what was going on. And some of the things that she did that was very, uh, very out of character for her was that I would have to like physically carry her to take her to the bathroom <laughs> so that she can use a restroom. But even though I took the medicine, I didn't get my me memory back for several weeks. And so that's just FYI. I don't remember taking the meds or that I became more coherent. I don't know, remember any of that. I do remember snippets of being in the hospital and not understanding why. There was one vivid memory I had when you were going, you were sitting by the bed before I went into the hospital, but you were crying and you were going through papers and I, I didn't know why you were so sad, but you were sad. And I, and I just remember remembering that was sad, but I don't, and then I don't remember my memory, but that was like one snapshot that I remembered and you were sad looking for stuff. Yeah. Um, it's, it was very, um, challenging at that point. I was, I was looking through the insurance papers because I knew that we needed professional help. We needed to go to medical doctors to go have them take a look at you and assess it. I knew that it wasn't going to be cheap. I was looking at resources to figure out, you know, how we're going to be paying for this. And um, we're, what were the tears for there? Or like, what was the emotion? Because that's in a very administrative thing, right? It's sure. like, just need to get this done. Someone that you love is suffering from something and you feel like you're losing them is a very painful feeling where that person is, I mean, they're physically there. They're physically able to talk to you and understand you, but at the same time, they're not there. And I didn't know if this was going to be a permanent thing. And that possibility of this becoming my new reality was a very scary thought. Keep in mind, we did have a, like a five, six month old baby with us at that time. So I was thinking, am I going to be a single dad that's going to take care of this woman who is not able to take care of herself? It was, it was a very emotional time, very challenging time. And then if you can touch upon the depression, because I know not everyone struggles with eating disorders or do they acknowledge it? Maybe it's just disordered eating. Maybe it's that we still turn to food and cope with food. But other than that, I mean, I also struggle with a lot of depression. I distinctly remember I would have to miss Deanna's and I would literally be waking up or getting out of bed when it was time to pick him up and it was already three and we could push it out till five. And sometimes I wouldn't even pick him up till five because I had used behaviors. Yeah. I, my thing wasn't a physical illness. It was mental. So a lot of it was, I was just in bed and I just couldn't get out. Like I just could not get the energy to get out. And Kevin didn't struggle with depression. So it was hard for him, I think also to understand that. And some of it was exacerbated by me binging and purging the night before. It, it was a little frustrating that um, I had to pick up most of the, the work, you know, then because you just weren't capable of taking care of it. So it definitely took a toll on me as well, where it was like, well, wow, this is pretty taxing where Judy is just depressed and just unable to kind of contribute. So, you know, we went through, you know, I've talked about this a lot and I went through a lot of therapy. We did the eating disorder route, intuitive, mindful eating and figuring out and I would get better, but then I would still struggle. Kevin would see me go in the middle of the night to the store and say, I'm so sorry, Kevin. And I go through my rounds again and again. And it's just like, did you not learn your lesson? And, but it was just this uncontrollable desire that I needed to go do it. And I think now what I know, I think it's because I needed meat and I needed the nutrients that my body so craved, especially when I was nursing. And so whatever food would make me crave those nutrients, that's what my body was telling me to go get. And I just could not control, even if I promised Kevin and nothing stopped me, even if, yeah, even if it was the kids, but, you know, fast forward now, I mean, you all know me as nutrition with Judy. I went through school and I healed a lot with God, with the diet. I think without the diet, I couldn't have started everything else that helped with the healing. How different is life 
with me, honestly, <laughs> eating a meat based diet. I mean, I can say <laughs> that it's, it's like night and day. You would think that after Judy went through that whole ordeal about losing her mind because of her eating disorder, ending up in a psych ward on New Year's Eve with a five, six month old baby, you think she'd wake up, but she still practiced those behaviors and nothing would, would stop it. And eventually she found, you know, the keto diet. And from there I graduated into or progressed into the, the carnivore diet. But I can say that night and day, it's so much better. I don't see her practice any of those behaviors. I don't have to wonder about is she sneaking out to do something that she shouldn't be doing? There's zero concerns about that whatsoever. And it's just so much better now because now I know that she is thriving with this diet that that's just, that's not a concern at all anymore. And if you could share a little bit about how you didn't believe in carnivore, but then seeing my healing, like your thoughts now. Yeah. I mean, when she first told me that she was going to do the carnivore diet, I was like, Oh, that just <laughs> sounds kind of crazy. Cause I know she suffered from an eating disorder. And then now she wants to go eat carnivore diet. It's an all meat diet. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that just sounds that can't be healthy for you. Right. And she started eating an all meat diet. And I'm a firm believer that this diet can heal. And it's because less of the science, but more of just me. Oh, 100% in the change in Judy. I mean, there could be so many science papers out there touting <laughs> that, hey, you know, you should eat it for this, this reason or whatnot, or there are studies that show this and that. But me seeing it firsthand from somebody that was suffering severely with an eating disorder that couldn't get her stuff together, but for her to adopt this way of eating and then change her life around, this is a testament that this diet can heal. Do you believe from everything you've seen with me that any illness, um, you, you know, the people that we work with are very sick. I lived it firsthand where I thought that there was no escape or there was no solution to this issue that I had. And then all of a sudden, Judy eventually found the carnivore diet and it is truly a godsend. Um, for those that are, you know, suffering from any illness, it's definitely worth a shot to give it a try. Because who knows, you know, your life could really turn around. Do you ever worry that maybe I'll get sick again? I know in the very beginning we did where we still, I mean, we still have the medicine from back then. But... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, living through it for, for such a long time in the beginning, yes, I was definitely concerned. And I, I knew where the medicine was. But to be honest, um, I kind of forgot about us even having that medicine. And as the days progress where she continues to eat this way, and as the days progress where she is not reverting back to her, her old behaviors, it's it makes my belief in her being completely healed and and the possibility of her going back to that way of eating, not even a possibility. Most of you probably don't know, but Kevin supports me on the customer service end where all the Amazon reviews, um, emails of inquiries of people wanting to work with us or just that may have questions. He gets, and his team gets the first, I guess, brunt of it. So he sees a lot of the people that are asking for help and their illnesses. And since he's seen me heal, he also knows that there are chances that these people can heal too. And I think he's just, because you also get the emails of thank you so much, right? Yeah. Of the yeah, there are people that reach out with stories about how they benefited from the carnivore diet. And uh, they look at Judy's work and, and they thank us for the benefit and the improvement they've seen in their lives. So I definitely see that it just reaffirms that the, the work that we're doing is providing it's, it's for a good cause out there. And I think it just affirms to Kevin, who was such a doubter of the carnivore diet. Um, there's heart disease that runs in his family. Um, that it's not about saturated fats and that this diet actually, that diet is so important in healing. And I don't think I've ever shared this much of the illness I suffered from, but I really just wanted to share with you all that healing is possible that I really was that sick and there's stuff. So if you haven't tried this way of eating, I highly encourage it. If you stumbled upon the way just know that take it day by day. My first year of carnivore was not perfect. My first year of keto was not perfect. And it's more days that you can add as wins that are more important than thinking about, oh, all, all is lost because you had a slip up. And I want to add to that, that you guys see nutrition with Judy, 
where she's this very polished, seems like she's established, she's done a lot. And she has definitely by no means. But what you guys don't see is that at one point in time, she was um, quite the opposite of what you see today. Not to sound you know negative or bad, but I, I only shared this to to say that that you can really change your life for the better with something as simple as just changing up your diet. Yeah, I agree. Because I had good days, but bad days too. And so the accumulation behind closed doors, my life was very dark. And that's just the truth. And I thought sharing this would be a good glimpse. And then you also get to meet my husband, who is truly <laughs> the rock in my life that has even helped me, you know, find this way, because I don't think I would have been able to live my life (laughs) (laughs) but um but as we wrap up let's talk about 2023 you know with nutrition with judy you know we're excited for 2023 and all the things that are coming um in the carnivore community as well as nutrition with judy and trying to support people to get to root cause healing healing with a carnivore diet carnivore cures meat only or all meat elimination diet for 2023, Kev, what are you most excited for? Um, we won't list out any projects right now. You guys have to stay tuned for that. <laughs> but I'm excited that in 2023, we're going to be able to help out more people. Yeah, I'm excited. There's a lot of things releasing in our brand for 2023. So and they are all resources and supports for the carnivore community. So we're so excited. Um, and we hope that we can just give a lot of our healing. I mean, Kevin's had his own healing journey and maybe one day we can share, you know, (laughs) but as you know, as we heal, we just want to give back. And, um, again, I was so sick and I know that the people that are listening and watching that you can heal and it's possible. And I literally have a crazy healing journey and it's possible. And so it's just take it day by day, step by step, meal by meal. And we just hope that 2023, we can even provide more support so that you can find those levers to help you get there. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. I know it's something you don't want to do, but I'm it wasn't sure too bad. I'm sure the people listening and watching will appreciate it. Cool. Okay, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation. I hope It shows you a sign of our family life and what we went through to even get here and be in front of you serving as Nutrition with Judy. My husband joined our team not too long ago, and now he is doing a lot of the back end work on the Nutrition with Judy brand. He's really been a beacon of hope and light in my life. It is through him and the love and support from my family that I'm able to be Nutrition with Judy publicly. So I hope that this conversation really gives you encouragement that healing is possible. There will be days where you will not have enough energy. There will be days where you may not feel your best and that is okay. I went through that my first couple years on keto and carnivore. There were days I was less perfect. There were days I was in bed most of the day. And now I don't really go through those kinds of days. I want you to really believe that healing is possible and that mindset will carry you through if you truly believe it. There will be days that are not perfect and that is okay. And even if there are days that are off plan, that is okay. We are human, we are resilient, and we can strive for more. I really want to encourage you that optimal healing is possible. I went from being on a 72-hour lockdown hold not able to nurse my son, not able to be making decisions on my own to now fully thriving and advocating for an all meat carnivore diet. And I know that a meat based diet is optimal for everyone. Okay, guys, make sure to eat a lot of meat. Take care of your bodies because it is the only place you have to live. I will talk to you later. Bye guys. Hey guys, it's Kevin from nutrition with Judy. That's fine enough. Just keep me say a sentence. Uh, I love Judy very much. (laughs) When Judy and I first started dating, there would be times when Judy would be, you know, very hot and.